Welcome to Do-It-Yourself Volts. I'm Seth. This is a micro hydro system that I installed a couple years ago. I believe it's time to get this system up and running for 2024. Now my goal with this system is to power up my tiny house, which I'll show you at the end of the video, and do lots of fun testing on the DIY Volts channel here. So definitely stay tuned for that. The first thing I want to do is head up to the top of the mountain where I have the water source or the intake for this system. I haven't touched this in about five months because of the winter time. So I want to go up there and make sure everything is in working order and get water uh, filling up in the pin stock, which is 1100 feet. And that way we'll be able to turn on the hydro unit and hopefully see some power output. All right, let's head up the mountain and get to work on this system. My water source is flowing at right at 30 gallons per minute, and my drop from the source down to the turbine is approximately 160 feet, which gives me approximately 70 PSI. So I've got 1,100 feet of two inch pin stock, and that's what I'm following currently to go to the top of the mountain. Each section of pipe is 100 feet long, and it's put together with a barb fitting and some hose clamps. Now this does introduce some friction, but it's the best I could do. I'm at the top of the mountain where the water source enters my hydro system. The first thing I have is a rock which channels the whole stream into a wooden box. That wooden box then channels the water into something called a Kawanda screen. It's a metal box with slats and those slats are angled to pull the water into the box but sloth off debris. After the Kawanda box, I have a manifold which takes the two inch output and sends it down into my next stage with three inch and a quarter pipes. Now that wasn't necessary, I just happened to have those pipes on hand whenever I built this system. Let's take a look at the intake and see what kind of cleaning up I need to do to get this system working better. First thing I want to do is remove some of these bigger sticks that have fallen here through the winter time. Just get those out of the way. And it looks like my box here has filled up with some rocks and other things. Let me go ahead and get those out of here. And these are rocks that have spilled down over the past several months and entered into my box. <laughs> several big rocks have fallen down in here. Now after five months, there is a bit of debris here on the Kawanda screen. I'm just going to uh, take this and uh, sweep it off a little bit. And that will help to bring all that available water into the system. Now my box is a little bit off the angle that it needs to be. It's kind of sloped down a bit. If I had this uh, directly straight up, it would do a bit better. I now have approximately 30 gallons of water going into this top box, and I would say probably 25 gallons is going into the Kawanda screen, and that breaks off here into a manifold, which goes from the two inch outlet into three inch and a quarter outlet pipes. And those pipes then go down here to the next stage, which is a collection barrel. Let's move down there and take a look at that. From the source, the water is traveling down this little bridge, which brings the water down here to a 55 gallon drum. As you can see, the three different sources are going down here into the barrel, and that is going to act as two different things. It's going to help separate some of the silt that may be coming down the creek, so that will build up in the lower half of the barrel. The other thing it does is it separates the air so as air bubbles are input or taken in from the source, they will then find their way back to the top of the barrel. So hopefully just water is being sent down the pin stock here from the middle of the barrel. Now all winter long, I've had the water running over here out the side. And so we'll be plugging that up here with the cap. I've got that right here. And now here's an issue we have to solve. The poly pipe that goes down as the pin stock 
has a tendency to shrink in the winter time. And so I have to find a way to pull that back up the hill. What do we have here? About eight inches. So we'll have to get that reattached. Hopefully this doesn't require too much work to pull this back up the hill. If it is gonna be difficult, I will have to go back and get a drill to loosen up these uh, plumber straps. But let's see what I can do real quick. That's close, about three inches to go. I believe instead of trying to pull this pipe back up the hill, I'm just going to uh, remove this piece of pipe and get one that is about, uh, what, four or five inches longer, and that should be sufficient. So while I do that, let's go ahead and cap off this barrel so we can have this thing filling up while I'm gone. With this much water entering into the barrel, it's not gonna take long before it is overflowing. My little overflow pipe over here isn't quite big enough, so the extra water is going to be coming out the top here pretty quick. Overflow has begun right there. It's just a moment before the rest of it will start overflowing. Here we go. It's nice to see that much water here in this system. Earlier, I mentioned that this 55 gallon tank is designed to exit the air bubbles. And right here is a good example of that. You don't want those air bubbles getting into the pin stock going down the hill. I believe this extended piece of pipe is gonna be a lot easier to work with than trying to pull that other one up the hill. The pressure up here at the top is not very great so these don't have to be too tight the further down it goes the more pressure there is the pin stock has now been connected it's time to open this system up and let the water go down into the pipe All right, let's travel on down the pin stock, back down to the hydro turbine and see what we get. As the water fills up the pin stock, you can hear it rushing by here at this point. Now that I have the water running in the two inch pin stock all the way from the source down here to the turbine, let's take a look down here and see what needs to be done. So I hear that the valve is open and water is coming out. I made this little housing. So you can see nothing is happening. Let me turn this a little bit. That seems to be working. It's a free spin right now. Let's go ahead and turn this system off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let the water pressure build up, which means more and more water will be uh, filling up this pipe. Uh, so let me actually turn this on here. Here we go. Nice. So we've got so far is almost 25 PSI. So that right there will continue to climb until it hits almost 75 up here at the top. Once that's done, the system will have enough water in the line in order to run multiple jets here and make some pretty serious power. Now, one thing I'm noticing, my little exit pipe has come loose over here. And so I need to reconnect this so that the extra water from the system will go back to the creek. That should do it. 
As the water fills up the penstock and more and more pressure is built up, hopefully up to about 70 to 75 PSI, I want to talk to you about where this power is going to go. In the past, for let's say the past two years, I've taken the power to my house. I had an outdoor power shed, which had a midnight solar uh, classic 250 charge controller, and it would take the high voltage of the hydro unit and it would charge up my battery and then I could use a couple of grid tie limiter inverters to power up my house. <laughs> I've had some deer around here with little babies, so I'm watching out. Um, so with that being the case, I now have lots of solar power feeding the house and I want to move the hydro unit to do testing at the tiny house. So uh, this unit right here can produce up to about 400 watts with the amount of water and pressure that I've got. But I also have a three quarter inch valve on the side of my uh, pin stock over here. And I want to take this over to the tiny house and test out multiple little small scale hydro systems, both for fun and for practical use with charging 12 volt systems. So let me show you the tiny house real quick and we'll come back over here and see what the pressure looks like on this system. Currently I have 10-3 wire coming out of the hydro unit and that goes through some conduit and follows this direction up to the house. But this right here is my tiny house. It's a whole lot closer and so the voltage drop will be very low. What I'm gonna do is take this conduit and just run it here to the back of the house where I've currently got a small bit of solar coming in and I will run the hydro through here and that way I will be able to do my testing and uh, let me show you inside what this testing station is going to look like. Welcome to the tiny house I started building 10 years ago and never finished. I do have a little bit of power in here. I can click this inverter on just like this, give it a second and then if I turn on some lights we should have some power in here. This is just running off of a single 12 volt battery with a small uh, inverter up here. So the plan is to use this section of wall right here for various charge controllers and inverters and uh, hopefully have a couple of batteries out here as well. And we can test out the hydro unit from inside here. So definitely stay tuned where I have uh, a lot more hydro stuff coming up. So yes, I will be able to use the hydro turbine to charge up some batteries in the tiny house, but I also plan on connecting a three quarter inch poly pipe from this area right here and running some even smaller hydro systems, which I will probably take this and skirt it around closer to the tiny house, perhaps over here in the back. And uh, it'll be a great location to do some fun testing of hydro units, small and big. After a few more minutes, it looks like the pressure of the system is now up to about uh, 27. So it is starting to rise. Now the pin stock is still filling full of water, but let's go ahead and watch this spin up one more time here for the end of the video. Open up this valve. I believe that's going to conclude this video on starting up the hydro system for 2024. But let's talk about what I'd like to see here on this channel in the future. I'm wanting to make this channel all about micro hydro. So that being the case, you've probably seen tons of micro hydro videos on YouTube. If you will send me links to the videos that you would like to see me recreate or test out. It could be anywhere from those uh, small inline hydro systems to the uh, weird contraptions that people make with uh, scoops, buckets, and all kinds of things. So let's go ahead and make this channel all about hydro. I'm Seth with the DIY Volts channel, and I will see you in the next video.